Now, where do these radioactive materials come from? Well, there is a naturally occurring radioactive material in nature called uranium. The uranium is very special because it was discovered in 1939 that you could split the uranium atom and release an enormous amount of energy. All nuclear weapons are based on uranium. But when this uranium is used in a nuclear reactor, it is split in hundreds of different ways. It's a violent process triggered by neutrons that are flying around. I have a list of 211 different radioactive materials which are produced in every nuclear reactor, and that's not a complete list. The difficulty with radioactive materials is the atoms are unstable. They're like little time bombs, and they explode without warning. And if they explode inside your body, they damage the cells, and they damage in particular the DNA molecules, and that can cause cancer because the cells begin to reproduce abnormally. And the same thing happens with uh, reproductive cells. If your reproductive cells, the eggs or sperm, are damaged, then you can pass this on to your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. And so generations hence, people can be suffering from consequences of a radiation exposure today. This stuff remains dangerous for literally millions of years. We know how to package it. We know how to package it well enough to keep it out of the environment. We know how to improve the packaging. In fact, we can do this from generation to generation. The next generation can do a better job than we did, and the generation after that can do a still better job. And this is what we call rolling stewardship. It's retrievable, it's monitored, and it's, you can perfect it, you can improve it. The whole idea here is to always improve the storage uh, from generation to generation, not just to watch the storage that exists and allow it to crumble before your eyes but a perpetual system of improvement. You'd ask yourself, why on earth would you want to create this kind of waste material? And to make it worse, there's no way that science knows to neutralize it or to render it harmless. Let's be honest, we do not have a solution. In the absence of a solution, we cannot afford to abandon this material. It's betrayal of future generations. We have to look after it. In most cases, you would think that if you were storing material for safety purposes, and if you managed to have 99.99% perfection in terms of maintain, containing that much and only allowing, let's say, one thousandth of a percentage point of the material to escape, sorry. In the case of nuclear waste, that's a disaster. So you have to have a level of perfection and essentially for eternity, because this stuff remains very highly dangerous for more than 10 million years. There are a lot of companies which are basically acting like scavengers. Uh, they see these multi-billion dollar funds that have been put aside for the responsible decommissioning of reactors and the management of the radioactive waste, and they feel that they can cash in by doing a relatively quick and dirty job pocketing the money for themselves and uh, making inordinate profits without doing any permanent good for society. The trouble is if you bury it underground and abandon it, then by the time you realize you've got a problem, it's too late to do anything about it. This is a societal problem, not anymore an industry problem. The industry regards it as a public relations problem. They figure if we can solve this public relations problem, we can keep on producing this waste forever and we can keep on racking up more and more profits by dealing with the problems that we ourselves have created. Uh, it's up to society to take charge of this and say, no, well, you should not be making these decisions. The reason why shoddy containers are being used, which have thin walls and so on, is because they think it's only temporary. We gotta stop thinking that way. We have to think of this as a permanent problem, a permanent legacy of the human race. We know how to package it, we know how to package it well enough to keep it out of the environment. We know how to improve the packaging. In fact, we can do this from generation to generation. The next generation can do a better job than we did. And the generation after that can do a still better job. And this is what we call rolling stewardship. It's retrievable, it's monitored, and it's, you can perfect it, you can improve it. The whole idea here is to always improve the storage. Uh, from generation to generation. 
Duchess to watch the storage that exists and allow it to crumble before your eyes, but a perpetual system of improvement.